Hello and welcome to Midday Connection on April 5th of Holy Week. It's Wednesday of Holy Week and it's, we're here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo, Texas and we're going to do what we normally do, read our daily lectionary text and talk about it and pray about it. And for those who don't know me, my name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And uh, we're excited for this opportunity to, uh, to do this today. So let me go ahead and open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you have provided for us each and every day, even in the midst of the difficulties and the complications that occur in our lives. Uh, Lord, we sense your presence. We know uh, through your word that your promises are true. We've experienced in our own lives uh, the very real sense of your spirit with us. And so I'm grateful, Lord, that you give us your word, that we can read your word, that we can be transformed by it. So I pray, Lord, that everything that we do here today would be glorifying to you and useful for building up the community of faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to start today with Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me, for there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction, their throats are open graves, they flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. In Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor is pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew scripture prophecy today comes from Jeremiah chapter 17, starting in verse 5 and going through verse 18. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals, who make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Like the partridge hatching what it did not lay, so are all who amass wealth unjustly. In midlife it will leave them, and at their end they will prove to be fools. 
O glorious throne, exalted from the beginning, shrine of our sanctuary, O hope of Israel, O Lord, all who forsake you shall be put to shame. Those who turn away from you shall be recorded in the underworld, for they have forsaken the fountain of living water, the Lord. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. See how they say to me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come. But I have not run away from being a shepherd in your service, nor have I desired the fatal day. You know what came from my lips. It was before your face. Do not become a terror to me. You are my refuge in the day of disaster. Let my persecutors be shamed, but do not let me be shamed. Let them be dismayed, but do not let me be dismayed. Bring on them the day of disaster. Destroy them with double destruction. And from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you yet, and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And our gospel lesson today from John chapter 12, starting in verse 27 and going through verse 36. Jesus says, Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. And back to our psalm, Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. 
Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And our final song today is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God. O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I like Holy Week. I like the idea of celebrating on a very sequential uh, series of, of ceremonies, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday. And I wonder sometimes how maybe Wednesday seems a little, you know, almost, well, what are we doing today? What are we doing today? And while we usually do midweek connections on Wednesday, and therefore some of the songs that we read are very familiar, this cycle right. that we get of 147, we've done 51 a lot, Psalm 5 comes around, Psalm 27 so comes around. Um, and so then doing Monday and Tuesday, and I don't know if you're gonna be available tomorrow, but maybe David and I will do this, but then Friday, um, different Psalms, different times, but seeing them in context, always so good always so good and I'm grateful for those who watch and even in just the way uh, Natalie and I look at these texts how uh, trusting that God is the one who is speaking so what can we get from it right. and today maybe that was a little bit of a filibuster on trying to figure out where exactly uh, where exactly I feel like we need to go with these particular things but I'm struck anew I think by even how the psalm, all of the psalms and the Jeremiah passage are 
seeming to be these laments of the people of, of the evil and the wickedness that is around them and how they are affected by uh, those people who are acting contrary to the way the Lord uh, desires them to act. And, and I think that's a good, a good lesson for us. Uh, and I know we've talked about it, and it's, 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 it's a theme that following after God, being a faithful person, um, or at least you know, attempting to be faithful as much as, much as we can, right. trying to be faithful to Jesus does not mean that everything in our lives is, is going to be you know, hunky-dory. But Psalm 5 in particular, you know, just this whole idea, I am, I'm, I'm trying to live out, uh, I'm, the only, only way I can stand before God is because of his spirit anyway, that I'm going to be, I want to go to his house, I want to do these things. But this, the verses 9, you know, there's no, there's no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are open destruction. Uh, you know, their throats are open graves. They flatter with their tongues. Um, and you know, this is Psalm five. This is early in our early in these songs of praise to God. And here early, you know, Psalm five, there's, and I know it, it's even prior to that. You know, Psalm one itself starts off with uh, the wicked are like chaff that the wind drives away. And so Psalm five. Um, Psalm two. Why do the nations conspire and the people's plot in vain? Right. Oh, right. Psalm verse. three. Oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Um, Psalm four. You gave me room when I was in distress. Uh, yeah. But what what struck me in the Jeremiah passage when you were reading this this morning? The first, you know, the, my first thought here is is we see in verse fourteen. This heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. And in in that, um, there is this recognition. And so, yes, you have these cries of lament, but there is this recognition that it is it is God who is doing these things, and that these things are offered to us. And it is it's this recognition, and it's this. It's this recognition that there is the world and there is God mm. and they are different and recognizing that it is the Lord's to do. The world doesn't provide healing in that. You know, does that mm -hmm. make sense what I'm saying? I'm thinking it out loud here. And, but it's the Lord has that role and, and he, you know, like I said, there's this delineation. There's the world, there's God and God can do these things he right. has the power to do these things but yet there is these cries of lament as to and, and i think that's where maybe even this idea of starting with the psalms you know that jeremiah passage you know verse eight they shall be like a tree planted by the water and i sometimes wonder well why didn't we read psalm one today you know right. they it are like trees that. that are planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in its season mm -hmm. so clearly uh jeremiah a prophet who is uh you know, post David and the Psalms largely being composed around that time, uh, some prior to that. Here is a prophet who is himself quoting the Psalms and claiming them as his own. So even as uh, even as the Lord speaks to Jeremiah, what does he do? He reminds him of what has come before, right? It's specifically, this is the Lord speaking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, remember the Psalms. Right. Remember these things. And as you said, I'm the one who accomplishes these things. Uh, you know, 147, right? Uh, don't put your, uh, what is it? You know, we, we think... Oh, Psalm 146, was, if it's the don't put your... Yeah, yeah, right. 146 yeah, yeah. is don't put your trust in princes and, and mortals in whom there is no help. But uh, Psalm 147, it's the Lord that makes all of these things happen. You know, it gives right. the animals their food, young wit, ravens and the cry. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, okay. Or his delight is not in the strength of the horse nor his speed, pleasure in the speed of the runner. Um, here's Jeremiah. He's preaching these difficult words against the people and God has to remind Jeremiah. Jeremiah, remember the Psalms. Remember how this plays out. I've got this. Humans are typically terrible. Right. The the heart is devious above all else. Uh, it is perverse. Who can understand it? 
right? Right. Um, but even Jeremiah needs to be reminded of that. And so for us ordinary Christians, you know, I know I know my name is in the Bible, but that's not the Joel. It's, you know, there's a different Joel. He's better. He's a prophet. Different Joel. Different Joel, right? But even us mere mortals, us, 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 you know, minor Christians, we have our struggles. But right. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, had his struggles. Right. And he was reminded, remember the Psalms, go back to how it's supposed to play out, go back to what has been going on. And shouldn't that then be an encouragement to us, we who have our struggles and our challenges. If Jeremiah had his struggles and his challenges and he was sent back to look at the Psalms, well, why would we not take our own instruction from them? Why would our own heart not be encouraged by them? And so here we are again, Wednesday of Holy Week, where Thursday we've got, you know, we've got the Monday, Thursday service, Friday, Good Friday, Easter coming up, but kind of the ordinary. This is sort of like the last of the ordinary days, I guess, of the week, right? Right. right. Remember the Psalms. Remember the Psalms. They're good for you. They're, they're good for us. Um, yeah. So now we got Philippians and John to work into that, don't we? Right. So let's go ahead and look at that Philippians passage first. Okay. And I was struck by when you were reading, um, how often do we think about Iodia and Syntyche? And what does Paul have to do to them? Well, they're, they're loyal companions. They've been struggling alongside me. But teach them to encourage them to uh, be of the same mind again? Like, you mean, you mean there are problems in the church? You mean that even people who are uh, trying to follow Jesus more closely can have their problems, their differences of opinion with each other, and Paul has to write about it in inspired scripture? Hmm, what can we learn from that? We're probably not going to be about that. I, I'm thinking... Right. You mean right. there might be problems in the church? There might be differences of opinion between people who are even focused on the same goal? Right, right. But isn't it interesting how the uh, these, these famous verses, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. How often do we take that out of context? Oh, that just means we're always supposed to be rejoicing. Well, well, yeah, but it's in the context of even conflict within the church, right. even in the in the context of difficulties and struggles between coworkers. Rejoice. Rejoice. Let your gentleness mm. be known. The Lord is near. Don't worry. Put in everything in prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known to God. Oh Lord, we need you each and every day. Lord, we need you not just in our personal lives. We need you in our churches. Uh, we need you in our relationships. We need you to give us that peace that passes all understanding and how, how easy it is for any of us to get distracted by um, tensions or conflicts or disagreements or things. Well, even this, you know, guard your hearts and your minds. I mean, think about the interactions that we have within our homes, within our communities, within our churches, even um, schools, you know, for those of us that have children. And then we're in that um, environment as well. How, when we are struggling, how does our heart respond? What is our first um I guess inclination. What is our first, you know, the hearts and the minds, you know, are we, are we happy when, oh, it's about the time somebody put them in their place or, but I mean, really think about how does your heart respond to people? Um, if, if people are, are people are not letting their gentleness be known? Do you, do you want to respond in kind or do you want to respond, you know, how, you know, just a heart check. How, what What's going on there? What's going on in your mind? How are you responding to them? How are you interacting with them? And, um, you know, when we, when we are struggling, I just, I think that 
it's very difficult or it's very easy for our for us to get hurt feelings for us to get and then to get hard and to get bitter and to get angry and that gentleness is not present um you know because they need to get what they deserve right Mm -hmm. and um but you know is that where our mind goes or and then like i said how is your heart you know is it is it hard is it you know are we rejoicing in the lord or are we more concerned with the disruptions that people bring to our lives right because they're really just trying to mess everything right they're trying to make you miserable right <laughs> That might be true of some people, but probably not everybody. And and most people are probably just trying to live their lives and stuff. And it can, you know. But we live in society. We are social beings. Mm -hmm. We work with people. We live with people. We do life together with people that are so, so different, different, you know, in all aspects. And how do we interact with them? And do we keep our hearts in check? Do we keep our minds? in that thankful and prayerful and thankful and rejoicing is that is that what's going on or Or when people look at us are they just seeing the irritation from their perspective are they seeing us as trying to disrupt their lives as opposed to trying to be peaceful and patient and all of these things that are explained you know, even even in verse ten through thirteen, uh, Paul talking about the ways that he uh, is taking the opportunity to show compassion to other people, and then what does he say? I've learned what it is to have little. I know what it is to have uh, plenty. I've learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry. Uh, and then that, that line, I can do all things through him who strengthens me, probably one of the verses taken most out of context in all of scripture, where people think that that applies to their, um, you know, their sporting events or their, uh, their physical bar exam things they're trying or their physical, you know, whatever it might have to be. And, and, you know, God is at work in all of those things as well. But, but again, I think within this context of how can, uh, how can the people of God be demonstrating what it means to live a life of faith in God? Probably a whole heck of a lot less complaining about things. Right. Probably a whole heck of, heck of a lot more um, love and sacrifice for other people, putting their needs ahead of, of, of our own, where Paul knows that he is receiving benefits from people and he is very grateful for those things and recognizing that even when those don't come it doesn't change his love for them right it's it's, yes this was a gift that was given i will receive this with all thanksgiving and, and, and humbleness and at the same time recognizing that there will be times that it might not be as pleasant right but that doesn't change paul's attitude it doesn't change his demeanor he still treats people with love and respect and all of the things that, that Jesus has talked about. Well, and this whole idea of I have learned to be content with whatever I have, I'm pretty sure we could all take that verse right there and say, I don't know. Hmm, pretty sure we've screwed that one up quite a bit, quite can, a bit can right? We, can we? I'm no, I'm completely sure. content all the time. Really? Yeah, all That's the time, impressive. Natalie. I am, I am that complete, is impressive. I am content all <laughs> but, the time. You know, I, I've learned to be content, right. whether it's little or plenty. And if we truly are content, what does that look like? Mm-hmm. And um, and so, yeah, it's... Well, let's jump back to John real yeah. quick. Let's just jump back to John 12. Uh, we've been in this John 12 passage for a long time, or at least, you know, last few weeks. And... Jesus is talking about it's time for the glory to come. This is the hour. This is what I've been prepared for. This is what I came into the world to do. There's this recognition that the end of his earthly ministry is coming with his betrayal and execution and all that. He knows it's coming. He's already talked to the disciples about that many times. 
and people still don't get it. You know, we were talking in a lectionary discussion today about how God all throughout says, uh, he told you that he was going to be betrayed. He told you he was going to die. He told you he was going to rise again. And even at the empty tomb, we find people are like, wait, what? What, what, what just happened? What just happened here? And so here Jesus again is talking about his death. I must be lifted up. I will draw all people to myself. And people are like, that's not our understanding. Right. This we we have a Messiah that's supposed to live forever, so you can't possibly Right. That can't be what's gonna happen. That can't be right, Jesus. You right. must be mistaken. Yes, you don't have this right. You don't have this right. And that there's that line in there that the ruler of this earth is going to be driven out. You know, this is the judgment that's also coming, but it's judgment against unrighteousness. This is not uh, this is not Jesus coming down to nitpick every little flaw that goes on in any any one person this is against like the ruler of this world that has brought this um you know the shame and the the oppression and all of these things you know the ruler of the world is going to be driven out by the death of jesus christ which allows us then to be welcomed into this new creation that jesus is bringing um, through his death god is glorified and the people are still, I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't fit in the box of my own understanding. Right. And so if we even think about how does the John passage relate to the Jeremiah passage, Jeremiah needed to be reminded of it. Paul writes to the, uh, to the Philippians, they need to be reminded of it. The Psalms all throughout are giving it to us. We need to be reminded of it. Everybody at every point in human history needs to be reminded that, that Jesus um, is all about making things new, judging, uh, judging right and wrong, making that distinction between the two, uh, 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 getting rid of all of the unrighteousness, bringing forth all of the peace and the blessings. And we as humans, even though we can read it, study it, even experience it to some extent, don't don't always do it right. Well, and I, yeah, I, I think sometimes we do we do read it, we hear it, we, we're like, okay, we get it, we get it. Do we get it? Mm. And if we and if we get it, but we don't get it, do we really live it? Right, I think that's because how many times do we know things and still do the opposite? How many times can we? But when you really feel something, man, you're going to pursue that because you know it's that's. Right. But when? How do we make that connection between our head and our heart? How do we? get to this place where our lives are consistent with what we know to be true. And I think ultimately this is why Jesus had to be the one to do it. No amount of education is going to right. change my heart. Right. Only the work of the Spirit is going to change my heart. Jeremiah spawns faithfully to God, yet still is challenged by it, still needs to have a heart transference. Paul talking to Eudiki and Syntyche, you know, Eudia and Syntyche, it's like, you know, it's, it affects everything. It's a change of heart. Right. Um, and they were doing good even. Yeah. Mm. Tough stuff today, but yes. good stuff today. I think this is, again, where Psalm 51 comes into play, right? You know, create in me a clean heart. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. We who have experienced that long to experience it again. But you can't just generate it within yourself. You need the Holy Spirit to do it for you. I need the Holy Spirit to do it for me. Hmm. You got anything else? I think that's it. There's still, there's, a, I do have some thoughts, but I'm not sure. We, we may not have enough time for some, not thoughts, I, you know, even questions. There's, there, yeah, it is. They are tough today. They are tough today. I don't, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know what to do with that first verse there in John. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I've come to this hour. And, but even here, it's almost like, Jesus was getting everything put together. I know that I'm here for this. My soul is troubled, but yet he is able to. He goes, no, this is exactly, this is exactly why I came. So I won't 
walk away from this. Right. Father, in this, glorify your name. And the response is, I have, and I will do it again. But it's almost like he's getting the head and the heart aligned right there. I love that. So, yeah. um, but anyhow, just interesting, interesting. Um, right. To look at it that way. Uh, right. And I think that really points to the fact that Jesus was fully human, that he was not himself this automaton that went through the actions just because that's how he was programmed to do. He intentionally mm -hmm. made these decisions. He was obedient by choice, right. uh, not by fate. Uh, he was not programmed a certain way. He chose right. to do these things. He still had human emotions. Absolutely. And, I mean, and that's there okay for us fear. to have. Yeah, there had to be fear. There Is had that to be like a little fear. semblance of doubt in there? My soul is troubled. Uh, uh, okay, wait. How do I respond? This, this is to glorify is God. You, this, this is, is what, this exactly why I came. This is why okay. I came. God says, right. And right. I've been glorified. I'm going to do it again. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's what that's how Jesus. That's how God responds from heaven, right? Mm -hmm. I've glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Yep, mm -hmm. there we go. Hmm, I think that was probably the best pick of the whole day. All right. Thanks, Natalie. Yeah. yeah, Jesus is fully human. Struggles with those same questions and concerns that we do, and then chose to be obedient. Why don't you just close us in prayer then? All right, that All sounds right. good. Heavenly Father, thank you for your words to us today. Um, thank you for challenging us and, um, and pushing us so that we can uh, hopefully lean in and, uh, and trust in you and uh, lay, our, lay our hearts open to you that you may Help us to reconcile the, the heart and the minds and that you would guard our hearts and minds in this world. And we just pray that as we continue through this Holy Week, that we continue to keep our eyes on you and that um, we, we recognize that um, it is you who deserves all honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks everyone for joining us. And... Thanks for reading scripture and wrestling through the stuff today. Appreciate right. it. Hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.